Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Mark and today I'm going to show you how to build your own stereo VU meter using some homemade Nixie tubes. So did you like the fancy Nixie Glow? Well, honestly, I have to confess, it's not really a Nixie tube. It's actually a laboratory test tube that I filled with some pixel LEDs. There are several reasons for you to build your own Nixie tubes. Number one, of course, is that Nixie tubes are rather expensive and they're no longer manufactured. So what you're actually buying and using is old stock. And another thing is they're rather small. So if you want to build something big like a spectrum analyzer, uh, let's say the bigger the better, then you want to have nice big tubes. So the more reason for us to build our own. For those of you who are not familiar with Nixie tubes, uh, let me do a side-to-side -side comparison between an N9 Nixie and an actual uh, Nixie tube that I built. On the right side you see a Nixie tube and you can see how the brightness is and it's quite low compared to the one on the left which is very bright because it contains pixel LED. And most of all we can use more than one color. Where a Nixie tube only supports one color, the one I made supports all colors of the rainbow. And also there's quite a difference in size. So now that you've seen both the N9 Nixie and the homemade Nixie tubes, I can only imagine that you want to build your own Nixie tubes. So without further ado, let's start building. First, we'll start with the tubes, then the wiring, and later on we'll talk about the software. We'll be needing a few components and you can decide two ways. You can buy a standard LED strip and use those or you can uh, create your own and that's what I did. So I created a nice PCB and it has room for 18 LEDs and when you solder them on you have a nice narrow strip that fits in a test tube. But first we're going to solder on the connector that will be uh, connecting the LED strip to the connector that's shown above. I actually use the pins of a connector because they're quite solid and not as flexible as wire. And I solder them to the pins on the PCB. Horizontally speaking, two pins are going to the front of the PCB and two pins are going to the back. And since I have a right angle, they easily fit into the hinge connector that we're going to use to connect the LED strip to the housing later on. It's not the most elegant way of soldiering, but for the, the sake of the movie, it gets the job done. And normally I would use different tools, of course. Uh, use an audio connector for the purpose of connecting the PCB to the base later. And you can take apart the connector and you can discard everything except the physical connector itself. First, I carefully removed the little edges, the little notches that are there that fits the housing because it didn't fit the test tube perfectly and I made a round ring uh, instead that has the size of the test tube so it's easier to glue the test tube on later and glue it on straight. And of course next I place in the LED strip I soldered with the connectors and I soldered them onto the connector and made sure everything was straight. And that's what you see here. First I did one connector then I line it up to make sure it's straight because you don't want your test tubes to be on an angle later when they're uh, placed in the base. So I align it and then I solder the other three points. That looks about right. So let me just put that back and I solder the remaining points. Now I had uh, another one already prepared and I can show you what it looks like when you place the test tube on top and just slides smoothly over there. Perfect. All that's left is place the materials inside the glass tube to make it look more like a Nixie and then we can glue it all up. First I made a little diffuser and it's basically paper printed and I have something that looks like a maze and actually this uh, it actually for my fly door screen door that I cut up. Make sure you align everything because you don't want it twisted because everything will light up when there's a big bright light behind it and you will see when it's out of alignment. So I nicely line it up and until it's perfectly straight. That's about right. Yep, perfect. And the next item I'm going to place in there is the piece of paper that I cut to size. And the file is included so you can print it but basically it's no more than two black stripes on white paper. And the light will shine through the middle. So I rolled up a piece of paper and I carefully slide it in there, making sure not to crack it. And then I carefully align it to the maze that's already in there. And I want the opening in the paper to be in the same spot as the opening of the maze. 
Now, next is to put in the, the LED strip for testing. You see a little bead on top of this LED strip that I glued onto it. And basically I did that to make sure when the PCB is inside the glass, the top will not touch PCB. The top of the glass will not touch the PCB. Because that would mean that the PCB is under an angle and the brightness would depend on the position of the LED. And this way uh, it's always a few millimeters away from the paper diffuser. Now let me give you first impression. This is the LED without the diffuser and now we're going to put the glass job over it with the diffuser and the mace. And this is what it looks like. Now take note of the, the, the white. You see it's kind of twisted. That means the alignment is not right and you need to make sure that everything is straight because otherwise it will be visible in the end. So let me just realign this a little until it's straight like so. That's about right. Now let's uh, give that another try. Now it looks straight. Perfect. Now all we need to do is glue the test tube onto the connector and for that I use some epoxy glue or some two component glue that is capable of gluing glass to plastic and also hardens out quite fast. This glue I'm using is like hard in 10 minutes. So that's useful unless you want to hold the test tube in place for the next 24 hours. I recommend you take a fast glue. But I did not use super glue because super glue is kind of aggressive and you will end up seeing all your fingerprints on the glass tube. And well, that's not nice to look at, is it? So glue that in place, firmly press it down. And now we wait. And then after a few minutes, when it's dry, we move on to the next step, which is cleaning all the leftover glue until it's nice and straight again, like so. Whatever knife you're using, be careful not to cut yourself. Now the tube is almost finished. All that is left is apply a little paint and I used a brass color so it gets this nice steampunk look that fits with the, the color I use for my base paint later on. Furthermore, it makes the test tube look more like a real vacuum tube. So I designed a nice box for my VU meter as you can see, I have access to a laser color, which makes life a lot easier. However, if you don't have access to a laser color, uh, you will have to find other ways of creating a housing, or you have to buy a ready-made box and make some mechanical adjustments uh, to fit all. I'm really wondering how creative you're going to be. If you design and build your own housing, I would love to see it. So please feel free to post a photo at the Element 14 community. Now that all parts are cut out by the laser color, all we need to do is glue all together. And I use some glue that's suitable to glue wood. Just press the part firmly together and you might even want to put some weight on top if you have some wobbly wood. Although with the small panels it's not likely. Uh, don't forget in the end to wipe all, all excess glue and I use a little white cloth for that. I just wipe off all the white stuff you see. First we prepare our wood for painting and I use a piece of sandpaper to smoothen out all the little differences and maybe some splinters. Don't forget to paint your box. You can pick any color you like and I just decided to give it a nostalgic antique look to fit the steampunk team. Now we're going to let this paint dry and then it's on to the wiring. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. So let me talk you through the schematic so you can do a proper wiring of the system. It's not that complicated actually. This is the basic uh, schematic and let's start going through the sections one by one. Of course we have the microcontroller, it's an ESP32 and the pinout you see in this picture is actually the same as the pinout on your ESP32 dev kit. You could use different ESP32 boards but you will have to check the pinout if it's still accurate or adjusted and you'll have to pick the right board in the library in Arduino. Next we have the audio input, uh, one for the left channel, one for the right. Uh, you'll see a capacitor that's to separate the audio signal input from the DC offset that we need for our ESP and the DC offset is created with the four resistors you see of 10k. Actually it doesn't need to be 10k but make sure when you use a different value it's the same for all four resistors that makes life a lot easier. 
And then we move on to the potentiometers. Uh, we need that to control the delay of the falling tiles and one for the sensitivity. And you can use actually any potentiometer. The value is not that important, but the lower the value, the higher the current it will consume. We also have two input switches. Uh, one is used to select uh, the color scheme to your liking and the other one is used to decide whether peaks are going up or going down. There are two ways to power up the system. You could use the USB plug on the ESP32 and feed it with USB power supply or you can use your own power supply and then you'll have to use the input and like you can see I added a switch. Now for the actual LEDs you have two options. You can use the PCB I designed for 18 pixel LEDs. It's a very small PCB that fits perfectly in the test tube and then you need to wire it up accordingly to this schematic. And option number two is buying some standard LED strips, WS2812B or compatible, and use those. And they come in different sizes and different number of LEDs per uh, meter. So you can pick whatever you want. You can even use 100 LEDs per strip if you want, although it will not fit in the test tube anymore. And you'll have to adjust the software sketch accordingly. If you're going to use the standard LED strips and uh, decide not to use my PCB, that's okay but take note of the wiring because the standard LED strips are wired a bit different. Before we move on to the software, there's just two more things I want you to see. On the left, you see a bit of my wiring. And in case you're wondering, I tied the, the wires old fashioned way. Uh, and actually uh, I didn't use some sort of uh, wax thread, but I used uh, dental floss. So that's an easy way to, to do this. Just use some dental floss and you can tie it all together. And on the photo on the right, you see a close up of my voltage divider. It's actually the four resistors on the input from the ESP32 on the audio side. And I felt it was easier to just put them on a PCB and solder them on the bottom side of the ESP32. After starting Arduino EDA, you first need to install the ESP32 boards if you haven't already. For that you go to Files, Preferences, and look for the line Additional Boards Manager. And then you have to add this line. The other two are not important, but this line is extremely important. It's actually the ESP32 board library. And you click OK. And then you go to Tools, Boards, and you click the Board Manager. And after loading, you can enter the search filter ESP32. And if you did it right, then this will pop up, ESP32 by Expressive Systems, and then you press install. And you, after installing, you can close it. Um, then it's time to load the sketch, uh, which I already did here. Make sure the name of the folder is the same as the name of your sketch. If not, then Arduino will correct that for you, or it will ask you to correct it. Uh, then you set a board to whatever we're using. In my case, that's a ESP32 do it dev kit version one but if you're using another board then you uh, need to pick another board then you hook up your esp and then you set the correct com port in my case it's com4 but uh, in your case it might be different and then you press compile and upload and it will go compile and upload your sketch and that's all there is to it now let me show you uh, a few settings that you can change that are important First of all, there is the number of LEDs per LED strip. I call that the matrix height. And in my case, uh, I'm using 18 LEDs. If the number of LEDs you're using per strip is different, then you can change it here. You can set a maximum current. This is special interesting if you're losing, if you're using a lot of LEDs and you're tweaking the, the brightness, then at high brightness, the current can be quite high and you don't want to burn out your ESP32 if you're using that as power supply. So that's why I set it. But for now, you can just uh, leave it be. If you have a different uh, chipset for your LED strip, then you can change it here. Same goes for the color order. And then we'll have uh, the pin, the IO pins. Then we have the mode button, the select button on pin 25 and 26. The long press is actually the number of seconds to enable another function for a long press on the button. I will get to that in a minute. Uh, we have the peak delay potentiometer and the sense potentiometer. And there is something called the brightness pop, which is actually not used in my version. But if you want, you can add a third potentiometer to control the brightness of the LEDs. If you do that, however, you will need to uh, change something in the main loop. I will show you in a second. Let me go there. 
the main loop and then around line 303 there is something called brightness is and I comment that out you can just uncomment it and then the brightness spot meter is activated for now we don't need it okay so we have several functions we have the mode button and the select button the mode button will cycle you through the color schemes and you can change the, the color schemes to the next one if you press it until the end then it will start over then we have the select button if you press it uh, once uh, for a long time for three seconds that's uh, the delay i mentioned before then the auto mode is toggled it's enabled or disabled depending on the state and in auto mode it cycles through the pattern every few seconds so it changes colors automatically then we have the select button um, double press if you press it twice quickly then you can change the direction of the peaks whether it falls down to the stack when the time is done or it flies away so that's all there is to it and you can take a look at all the other settings uh, right here there's an explanation in the comments and you can mess about with that that's totally up to you now let's look at a demo of what we just built Okay, so I used two tubes in my design, pixel LEDs, and each tube contains about 18 LEDs. The number of LEDs in the tube is totally up to you, and the best part, the number of tubes, that's also up to you. You'll need to adjust the software, but theoretically the number of tubes to use are endless. I'm just wondering, what would you use it for? We could build a tonometer, or a speedometer, or maybe even a multi-channel audio visualizer. I really like to know what you would use it for and please let us know in the Element 14 community. Please share your idea on um, how you would use it and maybe it might be a topic for the next video. This is all I got for today, so see you next time.